I'm Diana Felsen for 4 for 4 Science, where we discuss four mind-bending science topics in only four minutes. Where for art thou, Shakespeare? The great wordsmith's grave gets a radar scan. James, what does it reveal? Cursed be he that moves my bones. That's what it says on Shakespeare's grave. So don't mess with him. <laughs> Obviously. But, as you said, <laughs> filmmakers are going to do a, have done a radar scan of his grave and basically are hoping to find out a bunch of different things. Mm. We won't know for a while yet, though, because it's going to be part of a documentary that airs in the spring. But I'm really excited to see what they find. Yeah. Everybody's all up in arms about this curse. But technically, the scientists aren't actually going against the curse. It says don't, don't mess the bones up and don't dig up the dust. They're just sending radio waves on them, and that doesn't move anything, so they should be good to go. <laughs> That's exactly right, because what waves do, especially radio waves, are very long waves, and depending on, on how long they take to come back, because some of them will be reflected, and the fraction of them that get reflected back, we can know the depth and the kind of materials that are inside the grave. So that's really interesting. It's absolutely incredible when you think about how they're able to really look at the bones and not actually disturb them. And of course, right. scientists, as we all know, are very superstitious people who believe in, <laughs> in any mythological curse, right? Mm. Better be safe than sorry. <laughs> it's yeah. true. There is an ExoMars mission set to land on the Red Planet later this year. Lauren, what do they hope to accomplish? You're going to love this. Yes. They're looking for traces of alien life on Woo! Mars. <laughs> <laughs> so the first launch of the ExoMars mission is scheduled for next week. It's going to send two spacecraft to the Red Planet. One is an orbiter that's going to sniff out methane in the atmosphere, and that's usually an indicator of biological life below. And they're also going to send a lander to Mars, which is going to test out technologies needed to send a rover in 2018. So I like that the lander isn't going to, well, it's, the lander's only going to be on Mars for a few days conducting its science operations, and then basically it'll end. But the orbiter is going to go for, I think, five years, mm -hmm. and that's going to work with, as you said, this rover that's, that's going to land on Mars, I think, in 2018. Right. And we're going to get a lot more data during that five-year span. So I think it's a really good long-term project. Mm -hmm. I love how much we're advancing in space exploration because if you think about it, I mean, it's going to take only seven months to arrive at Mars. Yeah. And the, the lander is going to be at a very localized area and look for, you know, methane and, and some gases that are remnants of, of life. But also the orbiter is, is going to just stay in orbit for a while so they have a different perspective. It's very interesting. But we shouldn't get too excited. We're not going to find Martians necessarily. <laughs> run, Forrest, run! But could he or you outrun a super volcano? Researchers say maybe. Deborah, do tell. There are different styles for a supervolcano to erupt. One of them would be very fast-moving uh, pyroclastic flow of ashes, rocks, and super hot gases. Mm -hmm. But they figure out that that's not what happened in Arizona 18.8 million, million years ago. What happened was actually a very dense, slow-moving oh. pyroclastic flow. And so they're, they're saying instead of like in Pompeii, 300 miles per hour, it was actually up to 45 miles per hour. If you had a fast car, you could actually outrun it. Ooh, and the they whole, did not then. <laughs> the whole idea of this slow move and flow going at speeds of 10 to 45 miles an hour. 10 miles an hour, I think I could kind of keep ahead of it for a bit. 45, yeah. you've got to forget it. But no. I just don't know. I mean, like, what? This is, it's really useful science. It's interesting science. But at the end of the day, if there's going to be a volcanic eruption, you've got to get out of there. Mm -hmm. I think it's very clear that I would be dead in this super volcano. Because <laughs> Usain Bolt goes at 28 miles per hour, and even the human can maybe, maybe get up to 40 miles per hour. But I don't think we know anybody that can actually no. run that fast. So no. I, I could maybe get by the, the slower moving <laughs> cloud, but not the fast one at all. <laughs> yeah, pretty much, if a volcano erupts, get the heck out of there. Or you're screwed. <laughs> Archaeologists discover an ancient Anglo-Saxon island in the UK countryside. Will this be your new vacation destination, James? Uh, possibly. I should check it out when I go you home. Should. Yeah, in Lincolnshire. Does it even have that accent? It doesn't, <laughs> doesn't sound as strange there, but. <laughs> Beautiful little remote countryside in Lincolnshire. Um, you know, archaeologists have found this Anglo-Saxon site. A bunch of artifacts have come out of there, kind of dating back to the 7th and 8th centuries. It's really interesting. They've got an amazing time lapse of what the site looked mm -hmm. like. They use 3D modeling. Basically, the shape of the countryside is not like it used to be. This is a really great story of citizen science, too, because it was actually found by somebody using a metal detector. They found one of these writing tools that the Anglo-Saxons used, and then they reported it, and now it's become this treasure trove of, of clothing pins, pottery, uh, animal bones. So a really neat like way of finding the, this trove. Mm -hmm. I think it's really incredible to see how the landscape of the Earth has been changing, right? Because totally. it used to be an island. 
almost. Mm -hmm. And now, you know, as the tides of the water went down in volume, now it's actually completely part of England. And so it's, it's amazing. Which goes back to the theory of every horror film where California falls off the United States. <laughs> <laughs> so <Thank you. laughs> on that note, thank you to our special guest, Dr. Deborah Barry Viches who we hope to have on again soon. And don't forget the season finale of Outrageous Acts of Science airs this Saturday, March 12th at 9 p.m. on the Science Channel. Now you know what we think. Tell us what you think using the hashtag 444science.